session. Toccatas and fugues and rapturous symphonies composed on the great harpsichord of nature, the accompaniment of life, when that life is filled with the obsession to watch with clear eyes the miracle of young love, and to listen with keen ears to its song in the wind. And so our story, Wind Song, starring Rhonda Fleming. <laughs> Distant horizons become closer when viewed from the perspective of a hilltop, as problems become simpler when scanned from the pinnacle of a heart. Love knows its own way. Unleashed, it needs no guide. Its path lies straight and unerring, if we but have the courage to follow. Down this path walks the figure of a lovely girl, Anne Mason, her footsteps at times hesitant, for Anne Mason must reach a decision a choice in the songs of the wind, the songs that fill her ears with conflicting melody until their ascending discord becomes almost an obsession. All my life I've loved the wind, the sound of it, the feel of it on my face, cold and biting, or hot with a faint fragrance of other lands and its sting. I've often sat on a hill and looked out towards the far horizon and wondered about the world that lay beyond. It always seemed to me it must be a better world than my own drab, home-to-office life. I lived in a small town, boarded with my older sister Dottie and her husband Bob. Life and conversation went about the same every day. I knew when I opened the door at night how they'd greet me, and if I was late, I knew what Bob would be saying to Dottie. Hey, Dottie, when do we eat? We've got to wait for Ann, Bob. Well, what's the matter with her? She knows it's Friday and Ed'll be here pretty soon. I like to get to the dance early. I don't like to sit down without her, Bob. Well, just because she's your sister, there's no reason why we have to cater to her. If she'd only marry Ed Randall... Well, then why doesn't Ed ask her? Well, if she had any get-up, she'd see to it. <laughs> Look how you roped me in. Oh, Bob. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Ann. Hey, what happened to you? You get lost or something? Oh, no. But it's heavenly out. And I walked home from the office. You walked in that wind? Oh, you must be crazy. But I adore the wind. It's exciting. I love the strength of it pressing against me when I walk. Oh, you talk crazy. You can sit down now, Ann. Everything's ready. Remember, Dottie, how the wind used to blow on the farm sometimes? <laughs> That's right. You used to love it even when you were a kid. Just nuts. Just plain nuts. That's all I got to say. Well, you haven't forgotten it's Friday, have you? No, I haven't forgotten it's Friday. I don't get much chance, do I? What's the matter? I thought you liked to dance. I do. But I'd like to do something different once in a while. I get tired of going the same places, seeing the same people, 
dancing with the same fellow. Well, you better not tell Ed that. And I get tired of Ed, too, if you want to know. Ed. Well, let me tell you, young lady, Ed Randall isn't a guy to be passed up just like I that. I know. He's good and kind and has a fine job. And pretty soon he'll be head of his department. And next year he's going to get a new car. And he's got a down payment on a house. Oh, I know all that. Well, a girl could do a lot worse than. Yeah, if I was a girl in your spot, I'd be darn sure a guy like Ed Randall didn't get away from me. He, he, he's safe and reliable. Well, what more do you want? I... I don't know, Bob. I don't quite know. Every Friday it was the same. I danced almost every dance with Ed. Nice music, huh, honey? Very nice, Ed. I feel good tonight. Real good. You know what I said to the boss today? No. Mr. Potter, I said, these bills of lading ain't made out proper. And he says, I think you're right, Randall. You always are right, Ed. But, Ed, would, uh, would you excuse me a moment? I, uh, I can't dance anymore. I'll be back for the next dance. I promise, Ed. I had to get away. This night had to be different somehow. I don't know why. Maybe it was because of the wind. All I know is I couldn't stand listening to Ed's voice any longer. I went outside, and there, Brad spoke to me for the first time. Hello, beautiful. Oh, you... You scared me. I'm sorry. I, uh... I thought I was alone out here. Pardon me. Oh, oh wait a minute. I'm kind of lonesome out here by myself. Oh, I couldn't. I must go in. My sister will be worried. But you just came out. Well, it, it was stuffy inside, and I... I wanted to be alone. Well, that's why I came out. I wanted to be alone, too, but... I'd rather talk to you. Just for a minute, then. Now, not many girls like going out in a wind like this. Well, it doesn't help a girl's hairdo any. Oh, on the contrary. It improves most of them I've seen. Say, here's a bench. Let's sit down and get acquainted. My name's Brad Evans. Mine's Ann Mason. Hello, Ann. Hello, Brad. Um, you're new in town, aren't you? How'd you know? Oh, I've lived here all my life. New face is almost an event in Midland. Do you declare a holiday and celebrate it? That depends. Well, you're right to be cautious, especially in my case. Don't tell me you're planning on being a menace to Midland. I was, but I don't think I'm going to stay that long. Oh, what a shame. Midland needs a little menace. It's much too dull. Yeah, that's why I'm leaving. Oh, I wouldn't think of disturbing the calm serenity of your fair city. That is, uh, I was planning to leave up until just this minute. You must be a regular gypsy at heart. Free as the wind. And you? No. My life's not much like that. I live by the clock. Regular boarding house routine, you know. Beans on Monday, roast on Wednesday. And hash on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're not married, are you? No, uh, not yet. Thinking of it, huh? Well, not exactly. The fellow you came with, maybe. What is this? Information, please? Oh, I'm sorry. It's none of my business, I know, but I noticed you when you came in, and I'm just curious. That's all right. My life's an open book. I think I'd better go in, Mr. Evans. They'll be looking for me. Hey, if I didn't leave Midland, would you see me again, say, uh, tomorrow night for dinner? I, uh... No, I don't think I'd better. Where can I call you? I live... No. No, you'd better call me where I work. Harper's Real Estate Office. Ed! Oh, Ed! You won't forget now. Where the dickens are you, Ed? No. No, I won't forget. Good night. Until tomorrow. Ed! Coming, Ed. What are you doing out here without no wrap or nothing? Don't you know you'll catch cold? Why, there was a fellow at the office that caught cold. I want to go home. Now? But gosh, we only just got here. Say, what's the matter with you tonight? You're acting mighty funny. Will you take me home or won't you? Okay, I'll take you home. Ah, oh, but for the life of me, I can't figure you out. You act as if something had happened to you. I think you're right, Ed. Something has happened to me. I had dinner with Brad the next night, and the next, and the next. Yes, something had happened to me. Then one night, Brad took me to a carnival, and afterwards we sat for a while on the riverbanks in the moonlight. Ah, 
Oh, say, this is all right. Rippling stream and everything. What do you do, Brad? For a living, I mean. Now, that's a woman for you. Always practical. Oh, I don't mean to be curious. I, I just wondered, that's all. Oh, I, I write a little. Write? An author. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, it isn't so wonderful. I make a little money now and then. Sell an article or a story. Most of the time, I'm just roving around. Too interested wandering to bother writing. Don't you ever want to settle down? Have a home? Good Lord, no. Oh, I like to see different places. Meet new people. But the people who love you... Don't... Well, don't you ever keep track of them? I don't know that anybody's ever loved me. Not the kind of love you mean. Besides, I wouldn't want that. Brad. Well, it ties a man down. Oh, I've got memories, same as anyone else. Women I'll never forget, and fellows I've been friends with. But they're part of the past. And there's never anybody you... you wanted to come back to? Mm, well, once in a while I thought maybe I'd settle down. But I know it wouldn't work. I'd be on the move again. I see. No, you don't. Just forget it. Ah, oh, come on. We'll have fun and then say goodbye. Is it a deal? Sure. If that's the way you want it. But I think you'd better take me home now. It's getting late. Okay, I'll take you home. Only give me a minute more to look at you. These are the moments I never lose. Your face white in the moonlight. Your eyes with tears in them. I'm not crying, Brad. Oh, it's just that I... Damn, darling, you sweet, sweet kid. Okay, okay, let's break it up. I'm taking you home quick. Oh, Brad. It's no use lying to you. To myself. I love you. Yeah. I know. I suppose you think I'm a silly little fool. Falling in love with the first man I meet that I haven't known all my life. That's why you've fallen for me. I'm something new, different. A few months out of Midland, you'd wish you were back. I wouldn't. I know I wouldn't. Oh, I'm fond of you. I, I wouldn't have hung around this burg if I hadn't been. Is, is that all you are? Just fond of me? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Brad. Oh, I'm giving it to you the hard way. That way you'll cry your eyes out tonight and then wake up in the morning knowing how well off you are that I've gone. I'm going home, Brad. Please don't come with me. And wait a minute. No. No. Let me go, Brad. And you've got to understand. You've been clear enough. You've had your fun. Now you're ready to go on your way. Well, go on. And if you ever happen by this way again, drop in and see me sometime. You'll find me in the telephone book listed under Mrs. Ed Randall. And. <laughs> Blinding, unreasoning anger always has been and always will be the force that dims our perspectives, that leads away from the hilltop view of the horizons, the destroyer of love, that turns into raucous discord the songs of the wind and fills the mind with the slow poison of an angry obsession. In just a moment, we return to our story. Now, 
back to the story of Wind Song, starring Rhonda Fleming. Anne Mason listened to Brad's protestations of love, but the old sweet words fell discordant upon her ears, for their antique poetry was dulled by the clearer notes of honesty that was point and counterpoint like the figurations of a Bach tube. And she left Brad by the side of the river, her ears no longer attuned to the song of the wind, and she became tone deaf in the grip of an angry and unreasoning emotion that is known as obsession. I ran all the way home that night. Dottie called out to me from her bedroom when I came in. Is that you, Anne? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's awfully late. Are you all right? Yes, I'm, I'm all right. I'm going right to bed. I should think you would, out till all hours. Oh, shut up, Bob. Leave the kid alone. It's her affair. Yeah, well, it's my affair, too. After all, she's living in my house. Out uh, with some guy every night that nobody ever heard of. People are talking. And if she won't think of herself, she might think of you. After all, you are her sister. You don't need to worry, Bob. I'll be in every night from now on. Oh. Must have had a fight or something. Well, if only you'd keep your big trap shut. Oh, when I think of poor Ed... Now, listen. If Ed's so darn crazy about Ann, why don't he ask her to marry him? What's he waiting for, a hot foot? Oh, maybe he needs a little prodding or something. Ed's kind of shy. And maybe it'd be a good idea to drop around and have a little talk with him. Yeah, that's what I think I'll do the first thing tomorrow. Yeah, I'll get him to take her to lunch and settle things once and for all. And I ask you to lunch with me because I have something to say to you. I know I ain't much on looks, Anne, and I know that I don't stack up too well in education, and I'm not really in your class at all. But I love you, and that's straight. Ed. And this much I know, Anne. I'll do anything I can to make you happy. You've got to believe that. I'm sure of that, Ed. Oh, ever since I was a kid and we were in school, I, I've been crazy about you. I, well, I kind of wish you'd think about it a little before you say anything. I... I know this is a sort of a funny time to propose, but, well, I guess one time is as good as another. You're very sweet, Ed. I don't think I've been quite fair with you. I don't think I've seen things as clearly as I should. I've been living in a sort of a dream world, I guess. Maybe, maybe I'm really growing up now. You mean that there's a chance for me? I'll give you my answer tomorrow night, Ed. I promise. <laughs> Anne, I've been waiting for you. Oh, Brad. I thought we said goodbye last night. Maybe you did. I didn't. I don't ever say goodbye. Really? Anne, you said you understood me, but you don't. It isn't that I don't care for you, I do, but I know myself. And I know that I'm not cut out to be a good husband. I won't ever give you the things you should have. I can't promise security or even happiness. Or we'd live in the rich one week and the next week why. We'd be holed up in a dollar and a half room on a side street, lucky to have a buck to eat on. I want you, Anne. I want you more than I ever wanted anything in my life, but I won't lie to you. I'm only promising you today. Tomorrow, that's another time. Brad, what are you trying to tell me? I'm telling you that if you want to come along with me, marry me and take a chance, I want you. But I'm telling you, too, the kind of a guy I am. The kind of life you've got to look forward to. It's just whether you want to gamble with me or... A sure thing with Ed Randall. I... I don't know, Brad. I've got to have time to think things over. Oh, I'm leaving tomorrow night. You know where I live. You can call me if you decide. My way. So, think it over and... Be sure, Anne. Be very sure before you decide. I will, Brad. I'll be very sure. Oh, Dottie, I don't know how to decide. I love Brad, I know that. But a girl has to think of so many things. Oh, I know you're having a hard time making up your mind, Dan. I had to make up my mind once, too. You? Hmm. Well, I, I thought there was never anyone else but Bob. There was, though. Back in school, there was a boy named Dave. He wanted me to run away with him. Well, and Bob came along, and I knew with him I'd always have a home of my own and security. 
Those things are very important, Dan. Yes. Oh, it's getting late. If Brad was going to call me, he'd have called me by now. Oh, look, honey, why don't we go to a show? Ed's coming over to play Pinochle, and, well, you know how men are when they play cards. Oh, yes, I know. All right, might as well. Bob! Oh, yeah? Ed and I are going to a movie. We'll be back in a couple of hours. And, Bob, if... Well, if anybody calls for me, tell, tell him I'll be back in a couple of hours. Well, who are you expecting? That friend of yours? I'm not expecting anybody, really. I... Well, just tell anybody that calls, I'll be back. Okay. Ed and I play watchdog for you. Oh, darn this lock. As sticky as that love scene in the movie. The light's on. I guess Ed's still here. Well, I sure hope Bob hasn't lost his shirt, Dad. He most usually does. One thing I gotta say for Ed Randall, he's always lucky. And if you gotta get married to a man, Ann, you might as well marry a lucky one. Oh, finally got it. Oh, that you, Dotty? Well, it isn't Lana Turner. Worse luck. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good one. <laughs> well, I guess I gave it about over it. <laughs> Hello, Ed. Hello. Uh, no one called, Ed? Nope. Who the heck's gonna call this time of night? <clears throat> well, come on, Dotty. I expect Ann and Ed. Uh, <laughs> I got things to talk over. Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, see you tomorrow, Ed. Sorry you lost to me, but you know how it is. Unlucky at cards, lucky in love. <laughs> yeah, well, good night, good night. Good night, Anne. Good night, Anne. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure glad Anne is making up a mind sensible like. <clears throat> For a while, I thought she was going to throw herself away on that Evans guy. Just because he's so darn good looking. Ah, women make fools of themselves. A darn good looking? How do you know what he looks like? Well, uh, well, didn't you tell me? But I mean, I, well, I just sort of guessed it. Uh, Bob, look at me. Uh, what's eating you? You think I've done something or something? Uh, look, honey, i got to see a man about a dog. Robert, you come back here. Uh, you can't talk to me like that. I won't have it. Uh, uh, what do you want? You're a bum liar. You're not bright enough. That friend of Ann's, Brad Evans, was here tonight, wasn't he? Oh, uh, well, no. Wasn't he? Uh, uh, yes, but i got to look out for Ann. She's making a plum fool of herself. And, uh, will you stop looking at me like that? What did he say? Well, I tell you, I... I what did he say? Uh, Oh, a bunch of slush about being wrong about something. The same old line every guy hands to his girl. <laughs> that he changed his mind. And you and... told him what? Well, I told him she was out of town. And that she was going to be married, I suppose. Well, something like that. But, but it's for the best. Now, Ed, Ed's a swell guy. Oh, yes, Ed's a swell guy. Letting Ann give him her answer without once telling her that Brad was here. Why, of all the two low-down sneaking... Oh, what's the use? Hey, hey, hey Dottie, now come back. Hey, hey, hey you're not going to tell That's her. That's what you think. I've been thinking things over, Ed, and I... Well, I guess I've come to a decision. Anne! Anne! Oh, wait a minute. Before you say another word, I... Well, I want to finish something I started telling now, you about No, wait a back. minute, Dottie. This is no time to come busting this in. This is the right time. I couldn't have picked a better one. And... And remember what I said about Dave? The one that, well, he wanted me to run away with him? Yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't tell you the truth, the real truth. I didn't tell you that all my life I've regretted that I didn't go with him. That no matter how badly he might have treated me, no matter what might have happened, I'd have exchanged my whole life here for one year, yes, for one month with him. Dottie. Yes, now you know the truth. There's no use having more than two liars in this house. Dottie, what do you mean? Your friend was here tonight. Brad? Yes, he came for you. And those two told him you'd gone away, that you were going to get married. You'd gone away for a rest, a long rest. Oh, no. Oh, thank you, Dottie. Now, look, Ann, you've got to understand. Oh, you're so good, Ed Randall. So kind. Such a fine man. So upright and honest. Oh, oh it wasn't as much his doing as it was that precious husband of mine. They're two of a kind, so... Well, so don't make the same mistake I did. Go after him. Maybe it's too late. Brad must have gone by now. Oh, Dottie, I'll never find him now. I'll never find him. Looking for somebody, Ann? Brad. Oh, Brad. Brad, you didn't go. Nah. Come on, beautiful. The wind's singing loud tonight. Let's go to our old place down by the riverbanks. We've got a lot to say to one another. But how did you know? I mean, that I hadn't really gone away. Well, I can spot a liar a mile away. It was too pat the way your brother-in-law threw it in about you marrying Ed Randall. So I hung around. I saw you come home. Oh, I'm glad you found me in time. You see... I have made up my mind, Brad. Are you sure? I've been sure all the time. Well, it was just that I was trying to talk myself out of the truth. 
You know what you said about there being the Ritz one day and who knows what the next? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said, but I've been doing some thinking, too. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I can change. Gee, I guess every guy finds one woman that he never wants to leave, and... Well, I found you. You don't have to say that. I don't care. I love you the way you are. Oh, I know there may be days of aching loneliness when you're off somewhere in some crazy chase. I know, too, there'll be good times and bad. There'll be uncertainty and worry and unhappiness, maybe. Well, I'll try to make you happy, Ann. I swear I will. I know you will. Because there's another side to the ledger. There's a wonder and beauty of knowing and loving one another. Oh, there'll be the excitement of just being alive. Of being together. It'll be like... Like listening to the song in the wind. Maybe half the notes are lost. And no one hears the words. But the melody's there. Our song... Always in our hearts. And again, on the hilltop, not one, but two pairs of eyes view the horizons of tomorrow, their tomorrow. And their hearts beat in unison in rhythmic foundation of their symphony, a song without words, the melodies that are heard in the wind, when two souls are filled with the clean, sweet passion of young love, and two minds are bound together by the slender strands of a new and glorified obsession. In just a moment, I'll return with something about next week's story. Kim Hunter speaks of the murky clouds of amnesia. How can we return to the place where we left off during our mental sickness? What life is there but the present, shielded from the past? Who are we? What are we? Why are we? Next week, you will hear of a way that clears the fog of a man's amnesia in a drama of Session. Tonight's story, starring Miss Rhonda Fleming, was produced and transcribed by C.P. McGregor in Hollywood. <laughs>